Good morning, good morning, good morning, and welcome, welcome, welcome. Welcome to Kingdom Transformation Network's Morning Prayer. I am your host, uh, Coach Shakira Jones, your spiritual midwife, helping you to see you as Jesus Christ sees you. Here at Kingdom Transformation, we are the bridge that connects identity, purpose, and destiny. Because when you know who you are, you can passionately pursue purpose. And when you passionately pursue purpose, you can occupy the place called destiny. Here at Kingdom Transformation, self-care is soul care. When you take care of the very depths of your soul, you can live the quality of life that Jesus Christ died for you to live. 3 John 1 and 2 says, Beloved, I wish above all things that thou would prosper and be in health even as our soul prospers. Oftentimes we are not prospering. We are not moving to the next level. We are not entering into the realm of elevation. We are not conquering. We are not overcoming. We are not being triumphant because of something in the depths of our soul. Our soul is our mind, our will, our emotions, our appetites, and our desires. And oftentimes we don't bring our soul into subjection to the king. I want you to think about how often you uh, bring your thoughts to your God. How often you bring uh, your emotions to your God, your decisions to your God, your desires to your God, the things that you are, are longing for. How often are you bringing that to your God? The things that you are accustomed to doing, to engaging in, right? We don't often uh, check those things with our God uh, because we're just used to doing them. We're just used to engaging in them. We're just used to maneuvering in that particular manner. And when we maneuver in that particular manner, um, then it becomes a part of us. Uh, but we have been in a series called Royalty. And we have been looking at ways to shed those things that have become a part of us that should have never been. Because there are some things that we are attached to, that we have come in contact with, that are wrecking us in this season. And as we shed those things, we pick up God things. And so we're in this series about royalty, understanding that we have been connected to God in his family as, as royalty, and we ourselves are kings um, by that connection. And oftentimes we don't see ourselves in that kingly status. We don't see ourselves as the royal priest that we are. And so we don't engage as such. Uh, when we enter in as royal priests, what we understand is that we decree a thing and it is established. When you when you enter in and you begin to release declarations and you begin to release words over yourself, as a king, you know that's coming forth. Oh, that's that's coming to pass. Because what the Bible teaches us is that kings made decrees and those around them carried them out. There was a decree that King Darius made that no one was to worship any other God except for him for 30 days, right? He, he was enticed into this place by his appetites and his desires uh, because of the people around him who were jealous of Daniel. Um, but they said to him, they said something very profound and powerful. They said, uh, you know, nobody can overturn your decree except to be overturned by another decree. And since since this decree cannot be overturned, O king, although you're looking for a way to save Daniel out of the lion's den, he's got to go in, right? And so the king releases this decree. This decree cannot be taken back. And Daniel is now placed into the lion's den. He locked himself by his words because he was a king. And he knew when he released those words that it had to be followed through on or or there were some people who were going to ensure that it was enforced. So as kings, what we must understand is there are some royal enforcers around us making sure that stuff comes to pass. But there are also some 
uh, disloyal enforcers, right? And they're only loyal to their own agenda like the people um, in the book of Daniel. They were only loyal to their own agenda. The reason that they hyped up the king was in order to trap Daniel. Oftentimes, <clears throat> we are releasing things out of our mouths. We are being hyped up by darkness in order to trap another person that God really wants to bring into the knowledge of who he is. And sometimes we don't realize that as kings, we are confining others to prisons and spaces that God never designed for them. And that includes ourselves. And so when we can understand our kingly nature, when we can understand our royalness, when we can understand <clears throat> that we can begin to shift and change things. And so we have dealt with how royalty is a journey. And it's a powerful journey because it allows you to uncover and to unlock some things about you. This journey is about discovering the royalty on the inside of you. It's about unpacking the word of God in such a way where you can see you in the scripture. How often do you read the word of God and say, yes, that's me. Yes. That's who God called me to be. Yes, that's where God called me to go. Yes, that's what God called me to do. One of the beautiful things about Daddy God is that he has woven the pattern for our destiny in his word, but it takes our dedication to, to pull it out. Uh, one of my uh, daughter's favorite words is excavator excavator will drive past something and she's like oh mommy that is an excavator yes bunny that is an excavator and, and we need to be spiritual excavators we need to be those who can go in and and move some stuff around that has been covering what we're looking for excavators when they are on a site they have that little hook that they go in the ground and they they scoop up the dirt or they they scoop up the asphalt they scoop up whatever is in the way preventing what the person is looking for. We need to be people who, who are posturing ourselves uh, uh, to remove some things out of the way as royal excavators in this season. And so this is a journey of royal discovery where we have to be a people who have royal sight, that we aren't just looking um, on the surface level, but we are looking deep uh, beyond. We are looking into the invisible realm in order to be fully uh, fortified and saturated for where we're going. That we will have vision. Vision is going to take us into our future. It's going to give us the plan and the process that we are to work out in order to carry out the call. And then we need to be very aware of what we are, are setting our natural eyes on because what we look at that's what we think about, right? Our royal sight center impacts our royal uh, thought center. Now, we need to understand that transformation is going to begin in your mind. That if you are truly to be transformed, it changes in the way you think. That we have been given access and an opportunity to think like God thinks so we can be stable like God is stable, so we can enforce thoughts like God enforces thoughts. There's not a thought that comes up to, to the Lord Almighty and tells it what to do. And when Pilate was talking to the Lord, he said, listen, don't you know I have power over you to crucify you or let you go? He said, see, the only power you have over me is from above. And that means that whoever handed me into your hands has the bigger weight that they are bearing. But no man takes my life. I lay it down freely. He said, listen, thoughts that are coming to try to invade me, to try to manipulate me, to try to get me to do something that's contrary to who I am as a king. You can't even enter in because I won't be manipulated. Then we look at how your royal thoughts impact your royal emotions. So royal sight impacts your royal thoughts. Your royal thoughts impact your royal emotions. We looked at royal emotions and then we looked at how your royal emotions impact your royal sound. And we looked at royal sound, not necessarily the speech behind the thing, but the vibration, the sound that is released, right? Because there's, there's a sound that comes out of you. Then we looked at your royal speech, and today we're going to look at royal speech 
integrity. It's day 15, and we have been doing this for uh, three weeks, three Monday through Fridays. And our, our focal scripture concerning our royal speech integrity comes from Matthew chapter 5, verse 37. And it says, but let your communication be yea, yea, nay, nay. For whatsoever is more than these cometh of evil. But let your communication be yea, yea, nay, nay. For whatsoever is more than these cometh of evil. As a kingdom citizen, you are one who has been called to be full of integrity. According to Google Dictionary, integrity is defined as the quality of being honest and having strong moral principles, moral uprightness. Integrity is also defined as the state of being whole and undivided. When you are integral in your speech, people can trust what you say. You line up with the word of God that says that your yeses are supposed to mean yes and your noes are supposed to mean no. You are called to be a person who speaks as the voice of God. And when your speech cannot be trusted, it has been compromised and contaminated by the evil one. You were not created to be the mouthpiece for Satan. You have been called forth to speak as one who is speaking on behalf of your God. If God cannot trust you to be a person with royal speech, he cannot use you to the full capacity that he intended to use you in. This is the time for you to begin examining your speech so that you are aware of the quality of your words. Your words are the building blocks for your future. And the improper use of your words are detrimental to you and those that have been assigned to you. Allow God to speak to your heart today concerning how often you are using your speech to advance his agenda in the earth realm. Allow God to speak to you concerning how often you are allowing the enemy to use you to advance his demonic agenda in the earth realm. Repent in the areas where you need to repent and stand firm in the areas where God has called you to stand firm. Uh, this isn't in the book, but oftentimes uh, we are a, a people uh, that that aren't integral in our speech uh, because we don't see the value in integral speech. We don't see the value in being a people who can be depended upon based upon the words that we speak. But oftentimes we enter into the realm of unbelief because we ourselves are not integral in our own speech. So we say, since I'm not integral, since my yes doesn't always mean yes, and my no doesn't always mean no, I can't necessarily count on God to be integral. But as we are engaging as a people of royalty, we want to understand that our speech demonstrates the, the, the state of our soul. Since God is perfect, his speech is perfect, right? Generally, when um, a, a person speaks, you can, you can hear the wounds in their soul, or I, I can hear the wounds in, in a soul when speech is released. And um, when you can discover where the wound is, right? If you, if you begin to listen to yourself as you speak, you'll discover where your pain point is. You know, marketers use uh, this way uh, to market to people in order to get them to see the solution that their product brings. Right. And so um, if, if there is a pain point, you can see where there is an issue at. And so I want you to begin to listen to yourself when you speak, because then you'll know what solution you need and then you can carry it to God in prayer. I'm going to pray this prayer starter and then I will pray as the Lord leads. Lord, we thank you for this opportunity to examine our speech. We thank you for endowing us with your characteristics and attributes that are essential for us as kings from your kingdom. Lord, we surrender our speech to you. We say that we no longer want to be instruments in the hand of Satan, but we choose today to be instruments in your hands. 
We choose to be whole in our speech. No longer will people have to question if we mean what we say, but they will know that we are wise with our words in order to always bring glory to your name. Lord, show us the areas in our speech that need to be cleaned and purified so that we are representing you well. We calibrate our speech in this hour that our reputation of royalty will precede us everywhere that we go. Thank you, Lord, for touching us and for bringing us to this place of change, this place where we desire change, this place where we desire to be a people who are integral, this place where we desire to be a people who are faithful, Oh, Father God, Lord, we just thank you for the grace that rests on our lives on this morning, oh God. And that as we are engaging, we are allowing you uh, uh, to prick our hearts concerning the words that we speak, oh God. For our words are spirit and they are life, oh God. And oftentimes, we use our words haphazardly. Help us, oh God to be a people who value what we say, to be a people who appreciate our words, that we would be integral in all that we do. Oftentimes, um, we lie. People lie, 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 lie. Um, and don't find an issue with the lie. When we're lying, we're not being integral in our speech. And people have categorized lies. Oh, that's just a white lie. Or, you know, I only said that not to hurt their feelings. Daddy, I never speaks from a place where he's not integral. He is always honest with us in order to build us. It is only honesty that will help to build. When we are looking to preserve people in a lie, we're looking uh, to manipulate them in our hands. Yes, we can't preserve people with lies. It's false in nature. And so Lord, we are just asking that every place that we have qualified our lies, every place that we have justified lying, oh God, every place where we have justified our speech being unintegral, we repent on this morning, oh God. We repent for Believing that it was appropriate to say certain things. But that you haven't given us a license to live outside of the realm of love. Every time we lie, we're entering into a place of hatred. See, when we love, we are honest. But love has a particular way of dispensing the truth. Help us, O oh Holy Father. Help us, Holy Spirit, to be a people who are integral in our speech, that we wouldn't make excuses for um, our unintegral actions, but we will be a people who are willing to fix the issue, oh God. On this morning, we want to be a people who fix the issue. On this morning, we want to be a people who change, oh God. We want to be a people who make a difference. We want to be a people, oh God who are distinct, unique, and used by you. But if you can't trust us in what we say, oh God, you cannot trust us in what we do. And so help us, oh Holy Spirit, to be a people who speak integrally. Let us think integral thoughts, oh God, that we will be a people who engage in integral actions. Lord, we bless you on this morning for just breaking up that fallow ground in the depths of our soul where we have lacked integrity, where we have justified. I just feel like there's a lot of justification for why, um, you know, we're not integral in our speech, that we, um, you know, lean more to a place where we're justifying our actions as opposed to getting really to the root of why it is that we do what we do. Um, and so we, I, what I sense on this morning is we just really need to come to terms with um, no longer justifying because it makes us feel good. Because justification will make you feel good 
about the actions that you have taken as opposed to coming face to face with the inner you, right? What's in you and then any wounds um, that the demonic is putting their fingers on because sometimes we lie just because we want to, right? Sometimes we lie um, because we haven't dealt with the legal ground that an enemy is operating from. And so we, we have to be very clear on why it is that we are engaging in certain things. Uh, but the word of God makes it clear that um, Satan is the father of lies. And when we are not integral in our speech, uh, we are taking after him. Help us, O Holy Father. Help us, Holy Ghost, to not be a people who take after Satan. But we want to be a people who speak pure things. So Philippians 4 and 8 um, is a focal scripture for this year uh, when it comes to the kinds of things that we think on. It talks about pure things, lovely things, honest things, good report things. And oftentimes when we're not thinking on those things, we're not saying those kinds of things. Um, and so we need to discover why we're not thinking those things so we can say those kinds of things because we know that what we're thinking about impacts what we're feeling and what we're feeling impacts what we're saying. And so what is it that is, is blocking that from coming forth and, and bringing you to a mode of justification for your actions? Oh God, we just need to be purged on this morning. We need to be stripped in the master name of Jesus for the reason why we are comfortable in the place of justifying our speech, oh God. Why we feel we have a right. If they didn't do this, then I wouldn't have done that. Help us, oh Holy Father, to not be a people who look for ways out of your word. But that we look for ways to be preserved by you. We look for ways to be protected by you. We look for ways to be guarded by you. We look for ways to be covered by you. We look for ways um, just to be in the joy of your presence so we can be transformed and so on this morning oh god we are just asking in the master name of jesus that every place that we have taken delight in justifications for our dark ways purge us with his of oh god wash us white as snow allow us to be new on this morning oh god you make all things new Allow us to be new on this morning. Your word says brand new mercies we receive each and every day. You are a merciful God. You are a merciful God. You said that you will show mercy to whom you will show mercy. And we bless you for showing us mercy on this morning, oh God. We bless you for showing us mercy on this morning. As we have been repeat offenders in the area where we have lacked integrity in our speech. We have been repeat offenders, oh God, where we have lied and justified our lying, oh God. We have been repeat offenders where we have come and lied to you. Sometimes we're lying so much that we're even lying to ourselves and we think it's the truth. Help us not to be lost, oh God, not to be disoriented, not to be unstable, oh God. Lord, we repent and we just apply the blood of Jesus to our mouths, oh God. We say search and destroy every dark thing in the depths of our soul that we are depending on in connection to our speech. Lord, we don't want darkness to come out of the depths of our soul. But we want holiness and righteousness to pour out of us as your sons and daughters. We want holiness and righteousness to be the crown that we wear, to be jewels that we are adorned with, oh God. We want mercy and truth to guide us, oh God. We want us being a faithful people to be a mark that is upon us, oh God. And so we repent on this morning for every time we spoke and we dishonored the throne by the speech that we made. 
Help us, oh God, to be a people who mourn our words. To be a people who mourn our words on this morning. Because you are so good to us. And we want to bring honor and glory to your name, oh God. And as we mourn on this morning the words that we have spoken, as we mourn on this morning, oh God, our lack of integrity in our speech, oh God, we are asking that you show us the door of integrity. Hallelujah. You show us the, the place of safety. Integrity is a place of safety. And oftentimes we are not entering into that safe place show us the door of integrity oh god show us the way to make a difference lord on this morning let us be a people who are not ashamed of the truth but who openly embrace it and who are willing to do something with it, who are willing to allow the truth to impact us, impact us so we can live in the levels and the realms that we have been assigned. On this morning, oh God, we just, we're just looking for your peace to come in and to silence every accusatory voice. Because you have called us to people to be a people who mourn anything that does not bring you glory. And we won't allow the mourning to condemn us, oh God. But we will allow this mourning to place us in your presence, oh God. We will allow this mourning, oh God, to bring us to a place of peace and a place of reconciliation. Oftentimes we need to reconcile with our own speech, right? We need to reconcile and, and just understand the power and potency of our words. And so on this morning, we just want to allow God uh, to wreck what needs to be wrecked so we can reconcile what needs to be reconciled. Reconciliation brings results. It brings you the answer that you're looking for and it brings clarity. He used to work for a grocery store. <laughs> and I would reconcile the inventory after we would count it. I would get the information um, from the office and I would put it into a spreadsheet. And if I placed the numbers where they were supposed to go in the spreadsheet, then I would get the answer to the amount of um, goods that we lost throughout the year and for that particular uh, time frame. Oftentimes, we're not reconciling. We're not putting things in their right position, in right order to see the right result. But on today, oh God, we want to reconcile. We want to reconcile. We want to come to a place where we can uh, be clear, where we can understand, oh God, where we um, are no longer bound and burdened by the words that we have spoken, by things that we have to continue to keep up. Uh, because we have to remember speech that was not integral. On this morning, oh God, we want to be a people who are only engaging in integral things so we can see integral results. We admit we don't trust you because we don't trust ourselves. Help us, oh Holy Ghost. We look at ourselves and we think about the number of times that we have been dishonest. We think about the number of times that we have been manipulative. We think about the number of times that we have um, gone astray and done wrong things. And, and we think that you have those characteristics. But we bless you on this morning that it is impossible for you to lie. That you, O Holy Father, are not a man that you should lie, nor the son of man that you should repent. And we want to... Follow after you. We want to look like you. We want to sound like you. We want to engage like you, oh God. And so we are just asking that you would purge us on this morning. Uproot it, oh God, and tear it down. 
uproot it, O oh God, and tear it down in the name of Jesus. Sometimes we are, are dishonest with children, right? And we think we're protecting them. We're telling them things that are dishonest because we're like, well, we just want them to be children. Now, there are certain ways to say certain things, right? But often we are not integral in our speech. And then um, we wonder why they lie. We're like, little Bobby, who taught you to lie? Mama, you did. Because you're always lying. Help us, Holy Ghost. <sighs> Help us, oh, Holy Father. To be a people who are aware of what we're doing. Help us, oh God. To not allow the culture to crush us. But that we would answer the call of honesty in everything that we do, O oh God. That on today we would let our yeses be yes and our noes be no in the master name of Jesus. That we would let our yeses be yes, O oh God. And our noes be no in the mighty name of Jesus. We take off dishonesty. We, we've worn it like a robe, like a badge of honor, um, this dishonest place, this place where, you know, we say one thing and do another. So sometimes we are so um, unintegral in our speech that we don't even remember the conversations that we're having, right? And so it's a byproduct of our dishonesty. It brings temporary insanity. I know. You ever said something and you're like, I don't, I don't remember saying that. Because you just say anything. Help us, Holy Ghost. Help us <clears throat> to come out of the temporal insane states that we are, are prone to. Help us to be a people who can confront The reason the word says that the word of God is a, a two-edged sword, is sharp, because when the word of God is released, what happens is it will cut anything that does not bring honor to God. It will chop up some stuff um, so you can rightly divide it, because there's a scripture that tells us that we should be able to rightly divide the word of truth. Well, when a knife cuts something, it, it divides it, right? The word of God gives you the ability to rightly divide between what's right and what's wrong. Lord, we want what's right. Cut us in the name of Jesus. Cut us, oh God, that we would be a people who evaluate our own speech on a moment-by-moment -moment basis. Recalibrate us on this morning, oh God. Set us ablaze and bring us to a calm place where we are able to release what we have been bearing. One of the things I love about God, even in the place of, of purging, is that he's, he's direct, but he's loving all at the same time. So anytime he would correct me in the area of my speech, I knew I was wrong, but I always knew I was loved. Right? I always knew Hey, okay, this isn't right. God is right. And I can be better. He always pulled me to a place where I was encouraged to be my best self in everything that I did. No matter whether he said, listen, that was manipulative and it was ungodly. I said, okay, that's manipulative and it's ungodly. But you call me your own, right? I always, I could always go back to a place where I knew that I was his because of the way he loves. And so as you are dealing uh, with your speech, as Holy Spirit is dealing with your speech in you, I want you to remember that when he speaks, he, his word is sharp. He know how to cut it up. <clears throat> but he always cuts it up in love. I, I always have a safe place to go. I can always, uh, you know, get in his arms as I'm being purged, as I'm removing that stuff out of me. And, and that's my favorite place to be is in his presence 
um, being purged. So on this morning, oh God, we are just asking that you can continue to touch us, that you continue to purge us, and that you continue to do what only you can do. That there is now therefore no condemnation to them that are in Christ Jesus. That walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. Lord, we want spiritual things. Thank you, oh God. We want spiritual things in the name of Jesus. And so we are asking, oh God, that you just continue to build us. And you continue to be the ark of safety that you are to us. For you're unchanging in all of your ways. And so we just thank you that today we can rejoice. Because you have shined a light on a dark space. Thank you, oh God. We want you to continue to shine your light on those dark spaces that we can become the light that you have called us to. You know, as, as God dusts off those areas in us, our light gets brighter and brighter and brighter. And, and Gentiles will come to our light and kings will be drawn in. That's what it tells us in Isaiah 60. And so we don't want to be a people who are condemned in this place, but we want to be a people who are free in this place. Lord, we bless you for freedom. We thank you that you are the God who has freed us. And we're not going to use our liberty for sin. But on this morning, we use our liberty to engage in peaceful places, oh God. In peaceful places. In Jesus' name. Amen. All right. Grab your declarations. Today is a day of victory. Because sometimes we, we're not seeing what we're declaring because we haven't been integral in what we've been saying. We've been saying today's a day of victory and then we get into a hard place and we say today sucks. Well, was it a day of victory or was it a day that sucked? Were you integral in your speech? Today is a day of victory. My vision is set on the heavenlies. And I will advance in accordance with the words that Jesus has declared over me. Today, my vision is accurate. Today, my vision is clear. <clears throat> Today, I walk in faith <clears throat> full of the fire of God. Today, I partner with the angels that are assigned to my life. Today, I passionately pursue purpose. Today, I occupy the place called destiny. Today, I receive clarity concerning my current assignment. Today, the goodness and mercies of God overtake me. Today, my lips drip with honey as I declare the goodness of God to all that I see. Today, there is a shift in the atmosphere when I walk into the room. Today, I believe I am a glory carrier. Today, I believe that I am a difference maker. Today, I stand as a bloodline breaker. Today, I stand as the head and not the tail. Every obstacle in my life that is looking to get me to have the vision of someone that is the tail be destroyed 
in Jesus mighty name today I stand as one who is above only and never beneath every obstacle in my life that is looking for me to be beneath only catch fire and die in the mighty name of Jesus. Today, I sing songs of deliverance over myself in unison with God singing over me. Today, I am loved by God and by myself. Every enemy of my soul that is looking to cause me to feel rejected and abandoned, be destroyed in Jesus' mighty name. <clears throat> Oftentimes, we believe the lies of the enemy because we've learned the language of lies and, and it's a familiar place for us. And so because we grow accustomed to lies, we listen to the lie because it's an area of familiarity. Today, I am more than a conqueror and I cannot fail. As long as I abide in the risen savior, Jesus Christ. Today, I am led by Holy Spirit, staying in constant communication with my God. Today, I believe that I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Today, I believe that the works of God's hands are marvelous in his sight. And since I am the work of God's hands, I am marvelous in his sight. Today, I believe that I am a finisher. I won't quit when things get tough. Every enemy looking to discourage me and cause me to quit, catch fire and die in Jesus' mighty name. Today, I value me because I am one of value. And as I value myself, I can value others. <clears throat> Today, I am free to serve Jesus with every ounce of who I am. Today, I agree with God, walking in the truth of his word, and my soul is well in God's presence. Today, I say no to the plot, plans, and schemes of fear looking to pervert my destiny. Today, I say no to the powers of hell, looking to get me to take back my yes from God. Today, I say no to disobedience and strife. I will not be contrary to the plans and ways of God. Today, I believe the word of God is quick and powerful, that it is sharper than any two-edged sword, that it pierces and divides my soul from my spirit, as it is able to divide my joints from my marrows. Today, 
I believe that the word of God is a discerner of the intents of my heart. And since it knows the intent of my heart, I will speak to God concerning the state and condition of my heart. Today, I will not make excuses, but instead, I will seek God for every solution. Today, I will be a difference maker. Today, I will stand as a world changer. Today, I believe in the me that God created me to be. Today, I take responsibility for the life that God has entrusted to me. Today, I stand as a victor, overthrowing every altar of the victim, reclaiming every good thing that has been stolen from me. Today, I look destruction in its face and I say, in Jesus' mighty name, you will no longer have your way. Today, I look sabotage in its face and I say, stand down in Jesus' mighty name. Today, I say to sabotage every area of my life that you are looking to destroy. I command repayment sevenfold plus your furniture in Jesus' mighty name. Today I say to failure, you yourself have failed. I am hidden in Christ Jesus. Therefore, failure is not my portion. Today I say to failure, every seed that you have planted in my life, that you are looking for a harvest from, catch fire and die. Angels on assignment unto me, drag failure back to its camp where it will be tormented for failing to complete its assignment. Today, I proclaim victory in every area that God has assigned to me. Today, I set my face like a flint before the only one true wise and living God. Today, I trust God. Today, I trust Jesus. Today, I trust Holy Spirit. Today, I am settled in my position as a king in the earth realm, believing that what I speak, I will see. That just as the worlds were framed, by the word of God, so too I am framing my world with my words. Today I speak hope over every area of my life that appears hopeless. Today I speak love over every area of my life that seems loveless. Today, I speak strength over every area of my life that seems strengthless. Today, I decide that I will not be moved. Today, I decide that my heart is fixed on God. Today, I decide that all is well and I reap the harvest 
that God has designed for me to reap. Because I have planted the way God has designed for me to plant in past seasons. Today I stand as a son or daughter of the king. Knowing that all creation has been waiting for my manifestation. Therefore, my manifestation will not be delayed. Listen, I pray on this morning um, that as you go throughout this day, you are reminded that you are a person of integrity and that God wants to do a mighty work in you. On Monday at 8 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, we're going to talk about the royal decree. So come back, bring someone with you. If you are on the Facebook and you have a praise report or a prayer request, send it to me. If you are on the clubhouse and you have a praise report or a prayer request, raise your hand. But I am going to end the broadcast right now on Facebook and I will see you soon. Bye-bye.